गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू नो अबाउट बायोलॉजी ऑफ कॉर्डेट्स यूनिट नंबर फोर फर्स्ट वन टॉपिक जनरल कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ एव्स बर्ड्स आर वॉम्बलेटेड एनिमल्स देर फोर लिम्स आर मॉडिफाइड इन टू विंग्स दे हैव वेल डेवलप्ड फ्लाइट मजल्स दैट हेल्प ड्यूरिंग द फ्लाइट देर हैंड लिम्स आर एडेप्टेड फॉर वॉकिंग हॉपिंग पर्चिंग ग्रास्पिंग वेडिंग एंड स्विमिंग देर आर एपिडम स्केल्स ऑन देर लेग्स body is divided into head trunk neck and tail limbs are paired four limbs usually modified for flying the foot is with four toes they do not have sweat glands oil glands are present at the base of the tail pinna of the ear is rudimentary each jaw covered with a beak examples doves pigeons falcons ducks sparrow and flamingo etc They have fully ossified skeleton with air cavities. The endoskeleton is bony with long hollow bones filled with air cavities known as pneumatic bones. Their spindle-shaped body minimizes resistance of the wind. The feathers help in preventing heat loss and reduce air friction by providing passage to the air. There is no skin gland except the oil gland. The lower and upper jaws are modified into a beak. They have no teeth. They have sharp eyesight. The alimentary canal has a crop and a gizzard. The crop help in softening food, and the gizzard helps in crushing the food. Pigeons are other seed eating birds, lack a gallbladder. They have spongy and elastic lungs for respiration. The special vocal organ called syrinx is present at the base of trachea. Their heart is four chambered. RBCs are oval, nucleated, and biconvex. Twelve pairs of cranial nerves are present. They have a single ovary and oviduct on the left side. All the birds are oviparous and exhibit sexual dimorphism. The eggs have four embryonic membranes: amnion, chorion, allantois, and yolk yolk sac. Next, next topic: Columba libia, the pigeon. External characters: the body is spindle shaped. They Size varies from 20 to 25 centimeters. They are covered by colored feathers, leaving beak and a small portion of the hind limbs. The body is divisible into head, neck, trunk, and a small conical tail. The head is round and drawn out anteriorly into a strong, hard, pointed beak. The mouth is a terminal wide gap, guarded by elongated upper and lower beaks. The beaks are covered with a horny sheath or rampotica. The swollen area of the soft skin the seed surrounds the nostril it is present on each side of the upper beak the eyes are large and guarded by upper and lower lids and a transparent nictating membrane a pair of ear openings are situated at the short distance behind the eyes each opening leads into a short external auditory meatus ending in the tympanic membrane forming the eardrum Next topic: digestive digestive system of Columba libia. It comprises mouth, buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestines, which opens to the exterior by cloacal aperture. All the segments of alimentary canal fall into three categories: first one, foregut or stomodium; second one, midgut or mesenteron; and hindgut or proctodium. First one. Foregut or stomodium. In foregut or stomodium, first one mouth. The anterior most opening of alimentary canal is called mouth. In pigeon, mouth is a wide slit-like aperture bounded by the upper and the lower horny beaks having no teeth. The mouth is followed by buccal cavity. The featureless buccal cavity has a large, narrow, triangular, and pointed by at the tip of the tongue at its floor. The tongue has few taste buds and mucous glands and has the function of manipulation of food. The buccal cavity is followed by pharynx. Next, pharynx. The posterior most part of buccal cavity may be called the pharynx. A pair of elongated apertures, the posterior nares, opens into the roof of the pharynx. They are covered by palatal folds of skull roof. Just behind the posterior nares opens a single medial aperture of the pharyngeal tympanic or eustachian tubes. At the floor of the pharynx occurs a oval aperture with the tumid lips. 
which is called as glottis. The glottis opens into the trachea. Posteriorly, the pharynx opens into the esophagus. Next, esophagus or crop. Esophagus or gullet is a long, wide, distensible and thick walled tube which runs backwards through the neck to join a large dilator reservoir or crop. It is a large, thin walled, bilobed, elastic and non-glandular sac. The crop enables the bird to store quickly swallowed food for later digestion. It is specially large in gramnivorous gram-eating birds such as pigeons, finches, buntings and parrots etc. The grains are moist and softened in it. The epithelial lining of the crop is both sexes, thickens and sheds a white, slimy, proteinaceous and fatty crop milk during the breeding season on which the eggs are fed by both parents. Pigeon milk is produced by the degeneration of the epithelial cells lining the crop under the control of prolactin hormone secreted by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. This hormone stimulates and controls the formation of pigeon's milk. Pigeon milk's, pigeon's milk contains water 65 to 81% protein casein 30.3 to 18.8% and fat content 6.9 to 12.7 percentage and lactose 1.5 percentage. It is more nourishing than the cow's milk. Pigeon milk contains 35 percent of fat in comparison to 3 to 5 percent in cow's milk. The egg ones fed on it double their weight in two days. The pigeon's milk is regurgitated to the youngs. The crop also contains some mucus secreting glands. Beyond the crop, before opening into the stomach, the esophagus becomes thick walled and narrow tube. Next one, stomach. The stomach is differentiated into an anterior glandular proventriculus and posterior muscular gizzard. Proventriculus. The proventriculus is a small thick walled and glandular structure appearing externally as a slight dilation of the esophagus, but it is a gastric structure. Its thick mucus lining secretes the gastric juice. The spleen is a small oval red body and remains attached to the right side of the proventriculus by peritoneum. Next, gizzard. The gizzard represents the pyloric region. It is large, hard, muscular and large, laterally compressed having the shape of biconvex lines. The thick walls of gizzards have thick muscles radiating from the two tendons. Its narrow lumen is lined by an epithelium in which are present numerous minute tubular glands which secrete a fluid coiling which becomes thick, horny and of a yellow or green color and lines the gizzard. Its yellow or green color is due to regurgitated bile. The cavity of gizzard always contains small tones or grits swallowed by the bird. These stones help the gizzard in grinding the food. The gizzard into small intestine and the opening of a gizzard into small sphincter called the pyloric wall or pyloris. In carnivorous birds, the gizzard is not so muscular. Next point, midgut or mesenteron. The midgut mesenteron or small intestine is a narrow tube and has a lining of endodermally derived epithelium. The small intestine is divided in an anterior duodenum and a posterior ileum. The bile and pancreatic ducts usually open into the distal limb of duodenum. In pigeon, the left bile duct enters close to the pylorus. Next, ileum. The portion of the small intestine behind the duodenum is called ileum. Ileum is a long and coiled tube of uniform diameter. Its inner epithelial lining is thrown into numerous minute finger-like processes or villi, which greatly increase its area of secretion and absorption. Third one, hindgut or proctodium. The slender ileum continues into large intestine of smaller, similar diameter. The function of ileum and large intestine is externally marked by the presence of a pair of small conical blind pouches, the rectal and colic CK. The rectal CK probably absorbs some water from digestive food. The large intestine or hindgut is a short tube and comprises an anterior rectum and a posterior cloaca. First rectum. The rectum is narrow and is of same diameter as the ileum. It opens into cloaca. Its opening into cloaca is guarded by the anal sphincter. 
cloaca. The cloaca is a large chamber and divided into three linear compartments an anterior coprodium, which receives the rectum, a short middle or urodium middle into which urinary and genital ducts open, and a proctodium which opens to the outside by the cloacal aperture or vent. The urinary products are made solid by absorption of water into urodium and the walls of other chambers serve as a similar purpose. A small thick walled glandular blind pouch of lymphatic tissue, the bursa fabris, lies on the dorsal side of the cloaca. Next, respiration. The flight activity requires a continuous and abundant supply of oxygen. Hence, the respiratory system of Pigeon is highly developed and well differentiated. The respiratory system consists of external nostrils, glottis, larynx, trachea, bronchus, and lungs. The external nostrils are a pair of slit-like apertures occurring at the base of the upper beak. They communicate to the pharynx by internal nostrils. A glottis lies behind the tongue. It opens into the larynx. The larynx opens into a trachea. The trachea is a long cylindrical and flexible tube running backward to on entering the thoracic cavity, the trachea expands into a syrinx or voice box. Later, it divides into two bronchi, one for each lung. The walls of tracheal and bronchial tubes are supported by a series of closely set cartilage strings. Each bronchus enters a bright red lung. The bronchus divides and subdivides into smaller branches, ultimately ending in fine air capillaries. Lungs are solid. Solid spongy organs. They do not hang freely in the thoracic cavity but are lodged firmly in the ribs. Some of the branchial tubes pass through the lungs and communicate with the air cavities in the bone. They are nine A sacs. They are made in interclavicular, a pair of cervical, two pairs of thoracic, and a pair of abdominal A sacs. Next, mechanism of respiration. In birds, the res expiration is an active process. The process of inspiration is passive. In a resting bird, the sternum is moved up and down with the help of intercostal and the abdominal muscles. During flight, the sternum is rendered immobile due to the support of wings, but the body cavity is raised and lowered by the action of wings and by the lowering of the vertebral column. Next, air sacs. The air sacs are thin membranous structures connected to the primary or secondary bronchi via ostia and they comprise most of the volume of the respiratory system. Air sacs are poorly vascularized by the systemic circulation and do not directly participate in significant gases, gas exchange but act as a bellows to ventilate the lungs. Next, quill feather. This is the picture of the quill feather. Each quill feather has a central stem or scapus. It is divided into lower hollow part called the quill or calamus or a, and a solid upper part termed as rachis. The quill has at its lower end an opening called inferior umbilic umbilicus through which vascular process or papilla of the dermis project into the growing feather. The key difference between the feather and a quill is that the feather is a general term in use to refer to a feather or any part of the bird, while quill is a writing tool made using a flight feather of a large bird. Quills are composed of keratin and an anchor to the bird's skin. The quill is attached to muscles that allow the bird to control the orientation of the feather for flight agility. Fluffing to keep warm or showing off crest plums or other prominent feathers for courtship and aggression. Next, migration in birds. Bird migration is the regular seasonal movement of a north and south along a flyaway between breeding and wintering grounds. Many species of birds migrate. Migration carries high costs in predation and mortality, including from hunting by humans and is driven primarily by the activity of the food. Types of bird migration. All birds do not migrate, but all species are subject to periodical movements of varying extent. The bird which live in northern part of the hemisphere have greatest migratory power. Migration may be these types, latitudinal, longitudinal, altitudinal, vert or vertical, partial, total, vagrant or irregular, seasonal and diurnal. 
and nocturnal latitudinal migration the latitudinal migration usually may, means the movement from north to south and vice versa most birds live in the live land masses of the northern temperate and subarctic zones where they get facilities for nesting and feeding during summer they move towards south during winter longitudinal migration the longitudinal migration occurs when the birds migrate from east to west and vice versa starlings a resident of east europe to and west asia migrate towards the atlantic coast california gulls is resident and buried in atha migrate westward to winter in the pacific coast next altitudinal migration the altitudinal migration occurs in mountainous regions many birds inhabiting the mountain peaks migrate to lowlands during winter golden plover starts from arctic tundra and goes up to the plains of argentina covering a distance of 11 to 50 kilometers next partial migration all the members of a group of birds do not take part in migration only several members of a group take part in migration blue jays of canada and northern part of united states travel southwards to blend with the sedentary population of the southern states of usa coots and spoonbills of our country may be example of partial migration next total migration when all the members of species take part in the migration it is called as total migration vagrant or irregular migration when some of the birds disperse to a short or long distance for safety and food is called vagrant or irregular migration herons may be the example of vagrant or irregular migration other examples are black stork globe ibis spotted eagle and bee eater next daily migration some birds make daily journey from the nest by the influence of inf- environmental factors such as temperature light and humidity also examples are crows herons and starlings next seasonal migration some birds migrate at different seasons of the year for food or breeding called seasonal migration examples cuckoos fits swallows etc they migrate from the south to the north during summer these birds are called summer visitors again there are some birds like snow bunting red wing shore gray shore lark gray plover example etc which migrate from north to south during winter they are called winter visitors nocturnal and diurnal flight diurnal many larger birds like crows robins swallows hawks jays bluebirds pelicans cranes geese etc migrate during daytime for food these birds are called diurnal birds and gen- generally migrate in flocks next nocturnal bird some small sized birds of passerine groups like sparrows warblers etc migrate in darkness called nocturnal birds the darkness of the night gives them protection from their enemies next topic flight adaptations in birds birds have evolved not only wings but many other adaptations that help them to fly fly birds have a strong but a lightweight framework of bones this is achieved by the fusion and elimination of some bones while hollowing and the remaining some bones of the pelvic girdle and the vertebrae are fused together generally there are two types of flight adaptations in birds first one morphological adaptations and second one anatomical adaptations first morphological adaptations body constitute the birds have a spindle shaped body to offer less air resistance during flight this helps the bird to conserve energy and become more efficient at flight compact body the body of a bo- bird is compact dorsally strong and ventrally heavy to maintain equilibrium in the air their wings are attached to the on the thorax the light organs like lungs and sacs are positioned high the heavy muscles plays a uh, Uh, centrally are other features that help in flight body covered with feathers the feathers are smooth directed backwards and closely fitting which make the body streamlined and reduce the friction during flight it el- it lightens the body weight and protects it from the effect of environmental temperature they have have a, they also have a wide surface area for striking the air feathers add to the body buoyancy it insulates the body and prevents any loss of heat from the body this helps the bird to bear low temperatures at high higher altitudes 
Foliums modified into wings. The foliums are modified into wings, which is the only organ of the flight. They consist of a framework of bones, muscles, nerves, feathers, and blood vessels. The wings have a large surface area. They also support the bird in the air. The wings have a thick, strong leading edge with a concave lower surface and a convex upper surface. This helps in increasing the air pressure below and reducing the air pressure above. Thus, the, br the bird can fly upward and forward during flight. Mobile neck and head. The birds have a long and flexible neck which helps in the movement of head important for various functions. They possess a horny beak which helps them to pick the grains and insects while feeding. Next, bipedal locomotion. The anterior part of the bird of a body of a bird helps in taking off during flight. The anterior part of the bird also helps birds to land. The hind limbs help in the locomotion on land. They can support the entire body weight of a bird. Perching. When a bird sits on the branch of a tree, its toes wrap around the twigs. This is known as perching. The muscles are so well developed that a bird can sleep in that position without falling. Short tail. The tail bears long feathers that spread like a fan and function as a rudder during flight. They also help in balancing, lifting, steering while flying and perching. Next one, anatomical adaptations. Flight muscles. The well-developed muscles control the action of the flight muscles. It weighs about 1 by 6 of the entire bird. The flight muscles are striated. The muscles on the wings are large. Other muscles help the above muscles in functioning. Light and rigid endoskeleton. The birds have a very stout and light, light skeleton. The bones are hollow, filled with air sacs. They are provided with a secondary plastering to increase their rigidity. The bones are fused and, and lack bone marrow. The birds lack teeth. The thoracic vertebrae are fused except for the last one. This plays an essential role in the action of wings striking the air. Next, digestive system. The birds have a very high rate of metabolism. Therefore, food digests rapidly. The length of the rectum is reduced because of the minimal undigested food. They have no gallbladder which reduces the weight of the bird. Next, respiratory system. The respiratory system of the birds is designed in such a manner that the food is oxidized rapidly and a large amount of energy is liberated. Since the metabolism rate is higher, a large number of oxygen molecules are required by the body. For this, the lungs are provided which occupy the entire space between the internal organs. Next, circulatory system. Rapid supply of oxygen is required by the blood due to rapid metabolism rate in birds. Therefore, birds require an efficient circulatory system. Birds have a four-chambered heart that performs double circulation. This prevents the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Also, the bird contains a large amount of hemoglobin in their red blood cells, which helps in the quick aeration of body tissues. Warm blooded. The temperature of the body of a bird remains high and doesn't change with the change in the environment. This facilitates the birds to fly at very high altitudes. Next, last. Excretory system. The nitrogenous waste is covered to less toxic organic compounds such as uric acid and urates. They have no urinary bladder. The urinary ferrous tubules efficiently absorb water. Thank you.